This is the craziest week in New York, and uh, so I'm so thankful that you uh, fit our meeting into your week. And uh, I particularly want to acknowledge we have a number of our World Vision International board members here. We have an executive committee meeting in New York uh, tomorrow, including our board chair, international chair, Roberto Oliveira uh, from Brazil is here. And uh, we also have a number of our staff members here who um, these pictures on the wall look great, but apparently these walls don't actually hold pictures, so some members spent the day taking them out of their frames so they wouldn't fall off. So if you have a chance to look at the pictures, people put a lot of work in making sure they'd stay on the walls uh, for us tonight. Um, we have a couple of very special guests with us, and they're going to uh, speak after me. Uh, Dr. David Navarro, who is here, but uh, can't you can see him right now. There he is. Um, who's uh, leading up, leading the Scaling Up Nutrition Movement, S-U-N. If you have not heard of this, you have not been in New York this week. Uh, and uh, it's so exciting. Uh, they had a great day today, which uh, David may speak about. I had the uh, uh, privilege of being at the big event, David, that you held uh, yesterday at the UN. Uh, you had uh, many of the leading uh, UN people speaking there, including Josette and, uh, and Hillary Clinton and others. And, but I thought the best thing was the way you facilitated it. Just the respect you have, the tone you set. You had hundreds of people in the room. And it was the most non-UN meeting I've been at it for a long time. <laughs> So I think that's why this movement's going to uh, really uh, take, take uh, shape, because of, just because of the, the way you're leading it and the way you're uh, underway here in the first year. Uh, we're also going to have uh, Josette Charan speaking after David, uh, Executive Director of the World Food Program. Uh, Josette is a good friend of mine, uh, but uh, Josette and the World Food Program are great partners of World Vision, uh, one of our best partnerships in the world. And ever since I've known Josette, uh, she has been a champion of nutrition. Uh, and uh, she has stories, I won't tell them in case she wants to, uh, of the way she's tried to focus people on nutrition for years. And so that commitment over the years in the same direction is a big catalyst as to why we can now get this global movement going. People like Josette bringing us back, bringing us back. And uh, it's a big contributor to why we're able to be where we are today. Well, today we're launching World Vision's uh, contribution uh, to the research and policy in the area of nutrition. Uh, we call our report The Best Start, Saving Children's Lives in the First Thousand Days. And uh, for those of you who haven't followed this, these thousand days start at conception and go to the second birthday. Those are the first thousand days. Uh, as we launch this new initiative, I'm reminded of the Christian tradition of giving thanks before eating, a tradition that is shared by most other religions. Pausing this way not only expresses gratitude for our own provision, but helps us to reflect on the great privilege of being able to share with those who are less fortunate. Today, 12 million people in the Horn of Africa are reported to be at risk of severe malnutrition or worse. Across Africa, Southeast Asia, and elsewhere around the world, the long-term effects of sustained hunger contribute to the deaths of three million children each year. And I, 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 that's 10 classrooms of children dying every hour. Uh, unfortunately, it's even worse than that. Uh, millions more suffer permanent physical and mental impairment, interrupted schooling, and decreased lifetime income from work. You know, the reality is, almost everyone in this room already knows these statistics. They are appalling. Uh, yet for some reason, Gruesome statistics on the devastation caused by hunger don't seem to galvanize passion or action 
in the same way that numbers a fraction this size would in the developed world if they related to terrorism or even traffic accidents. I regularly, I regularly remind World Vision staff that our work is about individual people, not statistics. People like Gallo, a young mother in northern Somalia whose husband died of a snake bite while scavenging for food after their maize harvest failed. She walked for 15 days to the regional capital like so many mothers and so many other stories you've heard over the last weeks. Along the way, two of her children died, and she gave birth to another. Her six-year-old, Khalid, was skeletally thin with diarrhea and dehydration by the time World Vision staff met them and were able to save his life. Uh, World Vision has worked with the Food and Agricultural Organization and others for more than a decade in Somalia. And we've had tremendous results. And we hope that it will not be long before we're able to go back to Somalia and resume our work rebuilding agriculture in that tormented country. I've seen this kind of emergency food intervention firsthand in northern Kenya. Ten-year-old Ecuador told me that a relief food program that we were doing together with the World Food Program had saved his mother's life and enabled him to go to school for the first time. He was 10 years old. As the report makes clear, it's not just sudden food emergencies that concern us, but the long-term devastation of persistent undernutrition. In North Korea last month, I visited schools and children's homes, and the long-term effects of an in inadequate supply of nutritious food became very clear to me and everyone who was with me. In committing ourselves collectively to the Millennium Development Goals, we pledged to cut child mortality by two-thirds. We have three years, just over. Time is short. Our success or failure will largely turn on how well we tackle undernutrition. Really, I don't want to, I don't, it sort of can slip over this, but nutrition is a key leverage point. This will require the vigorous and persistent efforts of many of us working together, which is why we're so thankful to have many of our key partners in this room with us this evening. I was honored to serve in the World Health Organization's Commission on Accountability for promises made by nations toward the Secretary General's Every Woman, Every Child campaign. In its first year, and frankly, even this week, we have seen tremendous progress. We really have. In a world that makes a lot of press releases and a lot of speeches, and we saw a lot of that a year ago here, it's quite encouraging, <coughs> very encouraging, to see all that's been done and new commitments and momentum carrying on. But now we need to ensure that these national and global agreements result in real change for real people living in the poorest communities around the world. I hope that you are encouraged, as I am, by the good news in this report. I hope you all got a copy of the report. There is nothing new that we need to invent. In fact, it's pretty clear what we need to do. We must scale up education for mothers and pregnant women, energetically promote breastfeeding, exclusive breastfeeding in the first six months, and encourage the provision of a varied diet for young children. In the context where it's not possible to vary a child's diet due to a food crisis or other reasons, vitamin A supplements costing as little as $1.20 per day per child for a whole year could result in reducing death rates by 25%, $1.20 a day per child per year. Zinc supplements in places where diarrhea is endemic could save a million young lives over the next three years. So let's commit ourselves, all of us here, World Vision and all of you, to providing the leadership and influence that will help our generation 
be remembered as one that treated the world hungriest children as if they were our own. Helping children survive and thrive is crucial for the future health of every community. Feeding children properly during their first thousand days may be the most important building block in that undertaking. When people of faith give thanks for their food, hopefully it's an act of genuine gratitude and not just a matter of words. And when you read the report, please don't let it become just words. Let's give parents whose children are slowly starving, let's give those parents something to be thankful for also. Thank you very much.